Hey everybody, welcome into this edition of Phil's Tax Hacks and Other Retirement Facts with CPA and Personal Financial Specialist, Phil Putney. I'm your co-host, Mark Killian. Let's get started. What's going on, Phil? How you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. Enjoying the summer. Yeah, yeah. How was the trip? Obviously, we talked to the, the last podcast. You were taking the trip and everything, and you, you've uh, it's been hot. <laughs> yeah, it was hot. I, I, we were just talking a little bit ahead of time. It was uh, one of the hottest uh, weeks that we've ever had up there. It's, uh, I personally live up in Traverse City, and we always go up there, and we've had anywhere in the 40s. I mean, I can remember watching fireworks, trying to find coffee somewhere because you're freezing to death. You right. know, to, not this time, man. You were, it was hot. It was in the 90s, so, which is good. You had uh, you see you had the lakes at least you had yeah when you're on the lake you want it to be hot so yeah a little yeah, reprieve so we, anyway yeah we had a good time so well, good that's awesome yeah we were talking about you know how you know, with COVID and everything fireworks restrictions but yeah it was kind of crazy a lot of people boy because they you know people were buying stuff up and I mean oh, yeah the, the firework industry uh, or at least the you know the little tents and things people I imagine that did pretty well this year. Yeah, I mean, because they didn't have any of the big shows to go to, right. so people had to do their own. And we were talking; there was at my mom and dad's lake. They were on. There were there were a lot of probably four or five different houses around the lake that ended up putting on pretty good shows. So yeah. I, I'd be all for doing that again next yeah. year. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Well, we got a good show lined up for today. We're going to jump into it and talk about a few things uh, on the docket. Is basically just kind of a survival guide, if you will. It's kind of uh, five different little rules to kind of survive a market crash so that we can maybe be prepared for a potentially next one. Uh, obviously, at the time of this, you know, we're doing this podcast, we're, we're you know, the market's hanging in there. It's, it's back in the mid 26s or well, low 26s, but yep, uh, either kinda, way, it's, you know, bounce it's back a little bit and moving a little sideways back and forth. So yeah, it seems to just be a little up, a little down, a little up, a little down. Yep, so, yep. Uh, we thought this would be kind of good. So I've got five rules basically just to kind of run down for folks and let you kind of break them down a little bit for us. So sure. we'll just jump right in and, and see what we've got. Uh, have an understanding, always have an understanding of how much risk you're exposed to. Uh, obviously risk is paramount in 2020, right? We're worried about everything. We're risk of catching COVID, risk of what's going to happen with the economy. I mean, risk, 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 risk. Well, yeah. same thing. It, we, the market's always there. Though. That, that even, you know, p- no pandemic or whatever the case is, risk is something to have your eye on when it comes to your finance. Yeah. And I mean, unfortunately, over the last, you know, 12 years or so since we went through this the last time around, people kind of got comfortable again with the markets and, and right. thinking that, you know, oh, they have, yeah, there's a little volatility, but they generally move in the upward direction, which overall is the case. But right. yeah, there are times you have corrections, you know, some pretty major uh, adjustments in a market, which unfortunately we did see uh, earlier this year, you know, so kind of a, a reminder of markets don't always go up in, in that upward trending direction over time. Um, there's volatility along the way. and You've got to make sure you're comfortable with the risk and where that's positioned. You know, it's, it's yeah. not, not time to figure out in the middle of that, that man, maybe I'm not that comfortable with risk because at that stage is not the time to make an adjustment to our portfolio if that's not what you're comfortable with. So. Yeah. And people tend to think, we, we, we think a little nostalgically about pieces, you know, even this bull run, the 10 year bull run prior to yep. COVID, we go, well, it was straight up almost the entire time. No, it actually had. Yeah, there was, there was there a lot were, of volatility. There was quite a bit yeah. of volatility in a few places where it was a, a pretty sizable, cor- it was a correction. You know, it was it was a ten percent on a correction. There was a few times yep. that happened. There was a couple of times we went yeah. through some <clears throat> some sideways volatility, especially over the last couple of years. Right, <clears throat> it's been kind of bouncing around and then took off again, right before we got into this whole uh, the COVID scenario. Right. So. so as always, whenever you're thinking about it, when you're talking about how much risk are you exposed to, and that tends to be the question is that people go, well, I have no idea how much I'm exposed to. Yep. And I know you can do like a risk analysis and kind of get a risk score and all that kind of stuff. And that's probably a good idea to do uh, and to do it somewhat frequently because it is going to change. So I'm 49. So how I feel about risk right now, Phil, is probably going to be different how, than how I feel about it at 59. Absolutely. Yeah. And it should because your time horizons change, you know, I mean, you don't have as much time to, to start to recover from downturns in a market. You know, and that's, again, something that people have to, to adjust as they go. Right. Um, and when it comes to risk, it, it's understanding it, but then positioning it the right way. You know, yeah. and that, that's a big part of it, too, especially as you're nearing retirement. You want to make sure you have money positioned in a way to, to um, avoid some downside as you're spending. So you're mm-hmm. not getting right. into that volatility and worried about, can I 
you know, take my distribution next month because the account's down 20, 30, 40%, whatever it is. Right. right. You know, that money shouldn't be down that amount of money. <clears throat> you should have some risk. You need that for long-term growth. Um, that's, that's there, but it should be positioned in such a way that you're not having to touch that money <clears throat> for a period of time. So. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Because you're, you're now money you know, it should not be in that situation. It's, you know, when we have these downturns, yep. it's going to be affecting your later money. It's going to be affecting that, that later bucket, typically. Correctly. Yep. I mean, that's what we talked before. We, we do position money in those buckets. The later bucket, yeah, you need to have some volatility. Again, understanding what your comfort level is. We never want to position it too risky to where even though it is a later bucket, you know, you're not going to need it for a period of time. You're just uncomfortable and want to get out yeah. because that's well, too much risk. Yeah. So. And we were talking, you know, especially even with the age thing, we were talking about, uh, you've had some conversations with some, some even the potential younger clients here recently. And obviously mm -hmm. what they're thinking about is completely different than what it's going to be through the different age groups. And there's absolutely right. nothing wrong with that. And kudos to, you know, people who are starting younger. That's always great. You know, it's definitely helpful. Uh, but their mindset and their concerns are going to be a different set of parameters than it's going to be for a pre-retiree and, and a retiree. Right. And I mean, the other thing I see often w when people look at risk and retirement is, is they think it's like a switch that, okay, <clears throat> you know, I'm, I'm retiring next month. So now I got to turn the switch to more conservative. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the challenge with that is what if that was March, you know, all of a sudden, you, you miss the, the timing of that switch going more conservative. Mm -hmm. So you really have to understand that five, 10 years out from retirement right. and start positioning that money you're going to need in those earlier stages more conservative early on, which if you look at kind of this timeline, that might not make sense logically when you're thinking about it because you're like, well, but the market's so good. Why would I take money and put it more conservative? That doesn't make any sense. I've got another five years to retirement. Right which is great if you know when the correction is going to happen. Yeah. But yeah. It's easy. obviously none of us do. So <laughs> yeah, if you reverse engineer it, you're, you're a genius, right? It works, right, you know, right. Who, yeah. Who has the knowledge? Okay. So that's one. So that's, that's the rule number one, if you will. Uh, always have an understanding of how much you know, risk you're exposed to. Number two, uh, protecting some of the gains as we go. We've had that conversation before. Same kind of thing. You can kind of see yep. rule number one on that. If you know what you're exposed to risk-wise and it's maybe a little too much, then maybe it's time to peel some back so that you yep. don't have as much hanging out there in the wind. Absolutely. So and back to the, the bucket concept we talked about, we've done that with clients over time, is that later bucket, that's designed for growth. So yeah, during the, this time frame that's been pretty significant growth over time, we've peeled off some of those gains, repositioning, refilling, so to speak, that soon bucket money we're going to spend from. Right. Exactly. You know, so that we're, we're repositioning, taking gains off the table, making it more conservative so that we have the money we need. So when we go through a downturn, it's not a matter of, are you going to, it's a matter of when you're going to go right. through some kind of a correction in the market. Again, you have money positioned safely, so you don't have to worry about it. Yeah. And it's the, it's the, the gambling analogy. It's, it's whatever, you know, if you're a bit of a risk taker at some point, you kind of go, uh, maybe I'm pushing this a little too far and you start to kind of reel it back <clears throat> in a little bit. Same yeah. kind of idea, but obviously being a little bit more prudent would be good because this is retirement money. This is, you know, living on money once you've, you know, gotten to that, to the golden age there. So uh, yeah, you know, I mean, what you have at that stage is what you have. It's it not like you're got, typically right? going back to work and replenishing it. So yeah, it is not usually ideal. Or you don't want to, at least. <laughs> at least, exactly. We hope, anyway. Unless you, unless you just want to, like we've yeah. Unless you want to just do it for social activity or whatever it yeah, is. You know, yeah. Like I'm in the building, you know, fidget spinners, and I want to sell them online. I, I don't know, whatever. You know. <laughs> yep. Yep. Like that. Uh, all right. Number three. Uh, be sure that you are diversified appropriately. There's that word, diversified, where you know it's everybody and their brother knows that I need to be diversified, but very few people seem to know actually how to do it, how to be diversified. Yeah, and, and diversification is one of those things you, you need to understand and, and have it in your portfolio. Right. But don't put all your trust in diversification that, oh, I've got a diversified right. portfolio. It's going to, you know, hedge against these downside. No, it's, you know, it, it, you're still going to experience a downside of risk. Right. You know, it, it's a matter of then understanding in that diversified portfolio what pieces are more aggressive are going to have the higher volatility and make sure that piece is maybe positioned in a later bucket when we look at a client's portfolio, we're looking at the diversification and risk on the whole portfolio. Okay. 
but then we're specifically positioning risk out of that. We're pulling the more conservative, less volatile monies that's in our soon bucket. Later bucket, that's going to be higher risk. So even though together they have this balance, mm -hmm. right. when you look at them separately, they're kind of like this, where this is much more aggressive than maybe you're comfortable with. This is much more conservative. Gotcha. Overall, though, it's more of a balanced allocation. So Yeah, and, and we tend to hear, I, I think sometimes people go, well, like humans do, we tend to go to extremes, right? So yes. we say, well, I want to be diversified, so I, you know, I bought a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, and really didn't do enough, you know, homework to realize that what you bought was pretty much the same thing. Yes. And there, so there is over diversification. I mean, once you have so many holdings, it's no different than just holding the whole market anyways, you know? So I mean, it's, you've got to be careful. More doesn't mean better. <laughs> There's a lot of asset but, classes and to people yes. to not realize how many asset classes there are and how to kind of chop that up and be in different things. We tend to see, uh, and we've talked about this at, at length before, we tend to see people in mostly large cap, you know, in some yeah. mid cap or some small cap or whatever, but there's so many other asset classes out there as well. Well, and that's the challenge right now, because if you look at what's driven, especially in the last, you know, five to 10 years or so, mm -hmm. the, the market is that large cap stock, right. you know, so everyone wants to go there. That, that, oh, sure. Why would I own small cap or mid cap? They've not done well at all. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I need to own these. Well, yeah, but you still need that built into your portfolio because that's not always going to be the case, or right. at least it hasn't always been the case. Right. Emerging markets. Yeah, so you, I mean, there's, so, there's so many different yeah. types of things that have had peaks and in, in <clears throat> valleys just like, and so has large cap. But and that's yeah. when you're looking at rebalancing. Again, it's one of those challenging because now you're telling me to sell some of the things that are doing really good, the large cap, and I got to put it into small cap. Why would I do that? That makes right. no sense. Why don't I do it the other way? This is doing good, but, but, which is but, the case right now, but. <laughs> what took a hit, right? You know, what takes a hit whenever, you know, companies shut down uh, for yep. weeks on end. So, yeah. Yep. Yeah, back to our original discussion of if you know when that switch is going to happen, then great. But yeah. unfortunately, if you, if you, I don't think anyone does. That I've right, seen, if yeah, your crystal so. ball is working, yeah, hide that thing and never tell somebody because that's right. <laughs> they'll be, people will be after you for that. Uh, all right, so that's three of the five. Number four, uh, don't try to time the market. I get the crystal ball, right? Yep. You might have it sitting on your desk. I'm pretty sure it doesn't work or the magic eight ball. You know, yeah, try not work. Nope, wrong answer. Try it again. <laughs> right, yeah, yeah. Outlook cloudy is probably accurate. You know? Yeah, that's right. You might get it right once, <clears throat> maybe twice, even if you're lucky. But and that's probably like getting a hole in one. It's probably a game, <clears throat> right. Yeah. You get a hole in one, and you're like, holy crap! And I think I got this now, and I know how to do this. I yeah. know how to do this. I know, I'm really good. I could probably hit the PGA at some point. You know, the next time you're four putt, and you're like, oh, what was that about? You know, how did right. I miss that? <laughs> You get one good time, you know, market time situation and you think, yeah, I could probably day trade. And it's like, yeah, Whoa. yeah. Hey, so, you, yeah, you can't, don't try to time the market. Um, but again, when you're timing the market, I guess you got to look at or looking at the, the concept of timing the market. Okay. Make sure you're differentiating between what we call a tactical management style okay. and timing a market. Because we use a lot of tactical managers that some people might think is timing the market, which the way they do it is not. I mean, they're, they're statistically, mathematically driven, you know, right. so they're simply hedging against significant downturns versus trying to guess, oh, yeah, this is the right time to get out in the right class to get back in and whatever it is. You know, that's more timing, trying to profit from moves in a market. That's, that's what gets dangerous because you can make significant bad decisions right, right. and it doesn't work exactly the way you thought it was going to work. So, well, okay. So when people might hear that tactical management and I think mm -hmm. they may have also heard things like uh, active or passive, can you just right. kind of give us a quick little, uh, just kind of a variance on that? Yeah. So I mean the, the more passive type management is think of, you know, buying a, an index fund, right? Okay. You're, you're buying a fund, a mutual fund that is, designed specifically to mirror an index like the S&P 500. Yeah, whatever it might so be. So you're riding the ups and downs of a market, you know, versus a tactical management style. And there's a lot of different versions of tactical, but okay. more of a risk off type tactical might be geared towards large cap, but yet they've got a, an algorithm built into a, the, the management style where they're trying to hedge against significant drawdowns. Okay. You know, so yeah. they're simply trying to avoid the 20, 30, 40% drops in a, a portfolio because statistically, if you look at time, those are what have take, you know, have in the past taken two, three, four, five years to recover from. 
and and that's where know, versus the, the general ups and downs and okay and that's where knowing your risk comes into factor and also knowing your time horizon comes into factor absolutely you know, yeah because yep. you may not, maybe don't necessarily have your retirement date you know penciled in yet but if you know that it's within five years or i was gonna say you have a general down, time frame i would yeah, think yeah, a significant so. downturn five years may not be enough to get you back right um, and that's so, just getting back to even getting not back mentioning to inflation and every, you know so yeah. i mean there's yeah a lot of pieces that I, that have happened in that time. So. so as the old saying goes, it's not timing the market, it's time in, in the market. Yep. yep. All right. And then number five on our survival guide for lessons learned uh, and, and market crash rules, if you will, uh, it's uh, just having a well-conceived plan in place, you know, helps alleviate. And you could definitely talk to this because obviously with uh, all the clients that you have already, we, we chatted, you know, weeks and weeks ago, you can go back and listen to some older podcasts of folks, if you're just now kind of checking us out to where you didn't get a lot of panicked calls from people, especially in, in March, uh, April, when we were seeing, you know, 10, 12, you know, percent a day falling. Yeah, some big you know. drops. So, yeah, and that's really, this should almost probably be number one is this is the biggest pitfall is not having a plan. Yeah. You know, I mean, if you're just kind of winging this retirement thing, it's going to be a rough ride. You're going to have some, it might look really good, but you might have some hard experiences like going through this most recent downturn in the market, you know? Yeah. When we talk with clients and plan for retirement, we know this is going to happen. We don't know when, we just know it's going to happen. I mean, well, statistically. Those and all those things we kind of talked about, it helps. But I mean, downturns in a market, you know, so yeah, statistically- an average retiree, you're probably going to see that two, maybe three times in a retirement. Yeah. It's there. It's going to happen. You got to plan for it. You know, Very make true. sure you understand how you're going to then position against that risk. And you can't put everything too conservative, though, because now you've got the other risk of play of inflation. Right. You know, and that's really where a plan comes into play is helping understand how much do I need? What are my income sources? You know, what amounts do I have to pull from my portfolios? Now making sure that money is positioned the right way so that not only avoids volatility, but is has a high probability of lasting your lifetime. Well, and I think that's a great point too, because, and, and I know we're getting a little long this week, so I'm going to wrap us up here in just a second, but it tends to be one of those situations where I, I just saw a report within the last week talking about uh, life expectancy by the year 2035. Uh, I think it was like 95 for women uh, and 92 for men. I think it's currently like 82, 84, somewhere in that neighborhood. Yeah. So, you know, with longevity comes a whole myriad of more risks. Not only do you have uh, the different things you have to factor in, but you have to figure out a longer <clears throat> retirement and all those sorts of things. Yes. So a plan, uh, if you live 35 years or 40 years in retirement, you're going to see ups and downs in the market. It's just going to happen. Yeah, and, you have to plan for it. And so. you're going to see multiple administrations, <clears throat> multiple tax changes, you know, lots of things that so you have. To, a, a plan just kind of helps you get out ahead and, and make, you know, you got to make subtle adjustments as you're moving through retirement, but it's not wholesale, at least hopefully not wholesale changes. That's what a plan helps you avoid. Right. And I mean, a, a plan, it has to be flexible, right? I mean, it's got to give you the general direction and have a design of how you're going to handle it. And then it's got to be adjusted along the way. So, yeah. but you're right. I mean, longevity, we actually, we call it a risk multiplier because it is a risk by itself, but that risk actually multiplies all the other risks. The other because ones. if you take a a plan and put another five years even on the end of it. I mean, that multiplies everything else we've done from a risk standpoint because yep. that, that's a big deal. You yeah. know, five it, years at the end of a plan with inflation, that's a big number. I was just getting ready to say inflation on the end of that is a huge number. Well, we're yeah. going to wrap it up this week, folks. So, you know, we, we try to keep these under 20 minutes if we can. So as always, we appreciate your time here on the podcast. If you have questions or concerns before you take any action, you should know what to do by now, but I'll go ahead and tell you again. Uh, give Phil a call at 248-888-7530. If you're watching this in video form, I'll have it pop up on the screen. 248-888-7530. If you're not watching it, uh, make sure you check us out on YouTube. Get us, give us a subscribe. You can go to philstaxhacks.com and all the stuff is that you can find it there on phil's website philstaxhacks.com uh, you'll see the post we have a little blog post about each episodes as well as the video content for them so give us a like and uh, or a thumbs up or a subscribe or whatever platform you're on i guess if you're on facebook it's a like if it's on youtube it's a subscribe and so on and so forth we'll talk to you next time folks here on phil's tax hacks and other retirement facts with phil putney cpa and personal financial specialist at afs wealth management we'll see you next time
investment advisory services offered through AFS Wealth Management. The content of this program is provided for informational purposes only and is not a solicitation or recommendation of any investment strategy. Investments and or investment strategies involve risk, including the possible loss of principal. There is no assurance that any investment strategy will achieve its objectives.